our uh, focus tonight is community. Uh, that is where we go this evening as we come to the fourth week in our uh, look at peace. As we continue to go deeper in this avenue of Lent, this quest, this journey for peace, we have examined being in the presence of God. We've examined the power of our own experiences. Last week, we looked at our accountability to ourselves, to each other, and to God. And tonight, we come to community. These are some guiding verses for us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Uh, the reminder from Genesis that, it, that God realized it was not good for man to be alone. Uh, making a helper. And so also from Romans, uh, so we who are many are one body, and individually we are members one of another. So, uh, I'll remember to start the pictures this time. First off, it needs to be clear that from the beginning, we have been crafted as social creatures. We have been made in such a way that we need each other. It is in our makeup, from the very beginning of creation. We are not mollusks that can live alone at the bottom of the ocean and make our own pearls. We depend on each other. We are not hermits. We are not oak trees. Though fascinatingly enough, can anybody, can anybody tell me what the livest, largest living creature on earth is? Anybody have an idea? Dominic, what do you think? A lion? A lion's a big creature, strong creature. Biggest living creature. A whale? A red. Go ahead. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, the, the redwoods? Red Close. Close. The sequoias? Nope. Oh. It is actually a stand of aspen trees in Colorado oh. that have grown together into one singular root structure. And the fascinating thing about this thing, these things are is that when one tree starts to die, the rest of the trees bring it back to life. It is one singular living structure. That's just kind of an aside. But it's kind of a fitting example, actually. We are made to be in community. We are made to be social. We cannot self-reproduce. We can only go so far in self-soothing or self-compassion. We require the interaction and love of others in our lives. It is how God has created us. Because at one point, God did create a singular person. And God realized that that singular person just wasn't going to work. Adam was in the garden all by himself. And though God only made one, God realized in that making one another was necessary. Now let's make sure we get some clarity on this though. It's more than just having people around us. Ever been in a room full of people and feel completely alone? It's more than just having people around us. We can be with thousands of people who just don't care. Not that they're malevolent or angry, but they're just ambivalent to our existence. Picture this. I don't know the exact date. Someone probably can tell me before I finish this statement. Opening date for the Brown season at First Energy Stadium. Okay? 60,000 plus people packed into this place. All there for a singular focus with complete ambivalence to everybody else. You're in a place of 60,000 60, plus and 59,998 people really don't care whether you're there or not. It's more than just being around people. Again, not care as in, I don't care about you, Gail. I'm not a big fan of you. It's in, you matter to me. You don't matter to me one way or another. I'm ambivalent to your presence. We need more than that. That is not community. Community is not being with 60,000 people at a Browns game. Everybody's rooting for the Browns, except maybe those four crazy people that come from Pittsburgh, Rupert Steele. 
Let me tell you, I was, I was at opening day Soldiers Field. They were playing the Kansas City Chiefs. The place was packed with Bears fans. Anybody ever go to Soldiers Field? It's pretty intense. And there were two Kansas City Chief fans sitting in front of us. They probably had the worst day of their lives. Another aside. That's not community. It's more than just gathering around a common interest, but having no investments in each other. It would be no different if you go to a restaurant, or a tavern, or a pub, or a park. Common interests, but no investment. God looks at community differently, and in that, so do we. And through that difference, we come to a deeper place of peace and comfort in the world. Look, we gather here as community under the call of God's grace. But we don't gather as singular entities coming to the same place to look at the same God from an individual point of view. We come as people who are not only here looking to God, but also at each other in love and grace. We in God's community are connected to each other. We should matter to each other. We should care about each other, for each other. As Paul says, we outdo each other in building each other up. We bring our individual selves, we bring our individual gifts to the community, but we do it to share them with the whole and together combine our gifts for the greater glory of God. Community means we are part of something greater than ourselves. And yet at the same time, balance our individual identity. This is what I believe to be the hardest part in all of this. is striking that balance. There's one extreme that requires all individual sacrifice. We would call that a cult. You sacrifice your identity, your name, the way you look, your gifts, what have you. You become part of the great soup, and you just swim around in the soup. We are not that. Uh, you're not member number one, and you're not member number seven, and you're not seven of nine, and five of thirteen. We don't do that here. We understand there's an individuality that we all bring to this community, and yet at the same time, we do not function in the realm of whatever is best for me alone is what we do. We don't function on the side that says, you sacrifice everything any more than we, we function on the side that says everybody sacrifices for the individual. As community, we come together around the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Look, I've said it before. I love being here at Alliance. I love serving here and walking with you. But if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I probably would have never known where Alliance is. And I don't say that in a critical way. I probably would be pushing a mower in Pittsburgh. I am here, as well as all of you are here, because of your profession of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is why we gather. We gather around that proclamation. We gather in prayer and praise and discipleship, and yet we also contribute what God has given to us individually to the community for the betterment of God's kingdom since that is integral to our call as Christians. So we maintain our individualism, our individual identity, but yet we bring all of that together in one great big conglomeration, which we call community, for the good of God's kingdom. As community, we are connected to each other. We matter to each other. Again, as Paul says, when one laughs, we all laugh. When one cries, we all cry. We are part of more than just ourselves. And here's the thing. We choose to do this willingly. And you're free to leave whenever you want. No one's making you be here. We choose to willingly be here as part of this community. We choose to willingly give over a portion of ourselves to something greater. 
We come to community accepting that not everything in this community is going to be up to our standard, taste, or preference. But in community, there will be enough that we can hold on to to reside and grow with the knowledge that what we desire, someone else may not, and what they desire, we may not. And yet, at the same time, we can support it all. Because we are willing to invest in this. And we desire to be something bigger than ourselves. We desire to be something bigger than just our own identity. And we understand that we can do more together than we can of our own. And there's a great deal of peace in this. There's a deep, loving grace in this. In knowing that we don't have to do this alone. We don't have to do this life thing alone. We don't have to do this faith thing alone. We don't have to figure it all out alone. We don't have to move couches alone. Anybody ever try to move a couch by yourself? It's a really hard thing to do. Anybody ever try to drag yourself out of a spiritual pit by yourself? It's a really hard thing to do. Or go through the storm of life or a difficult circumstance all alone. We don't have to do that. Because we have each other. We are not left to ourselves in all things. We have support and encouragement. We have others who stand with us. We have others to help lift us up, show us the ways of peace, and lend a hand. And we, in turn, have the capability of doing that for others as well. That's what it means to live in community. We have people who hold us accountable for our words and actions and promises before God and each other. And we willingly choose to do that. Again, remember, we're not here by force. By signing on to the community, this is what we sign on to. God has not chosen to let us drift through this life trying to figure out the best way in all things. But God has placed us amongst people and teachers that can help us and guide us. And we can help and guide. We are part of something bigger. And we are part of something beautiful. That's what it means to be in community. That's why God has chosen this over all other possible forms of proclamation. For 2,000 years, God has looked to the community of believers to carry out the witness of Christ. Us. Us messy, painful, difficult people. Maybe not you, but me, of course. Mm -hmm. So, it is with life. Life is painful and messy and difficult. So we bring that painful and messy and difficult together. And we find commonality and space so we can move forward. I want to make a quick turn here. But I'm, I really tried to find a transition for this, but I couldn't. So... I'm just going to make a quick turn here when we talk about community. There's another important part about community. Community, it helps us in our thinking and our acting. Community forms us and molds us. Maybe that was the transition I should have thought. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and all of you wonderful people infusing me with knowledge and good thoughts. Community, it helps us and it molds us in our acting and our thinking. If we are left to our own heads, we can think of all kinds of things. I mean, all kinds of crazy things. Some of those crazy things actually worked out. Like, hey, maybe man can fly. All right? Or maybe we can split the atom. Those are really crazy things that turn out to be awesome. But we can think of some really crazy things if we're just left to our own heads and imaginations. If we hermited for a while then the ideas that would come forward would be more bizarre and more extreme and outside of community and scripture. When we bring ourselves back into community, 
and we start to present who we are and what we think to those around us. Community then can help us to see where God is directing us. But it also helps us to say to stay centered on what is most important. When we come together with God's people, God's people show us the way. If we don't come together with God's people, then we can go off in any way we want. I hear it often, you know what, I'm, I'm spiritual but not religious. Okay, that's <coughs> awesome. What are you spiritual about? You know. Or I love Jesus but I don't go to church. Okay, so then where do you get Jesus at if you're not with Jesus' people? How do you know what it means to be church if you're not in church? How do you know what it means to be with God if you're not with the people of God? You can only go so far by yourself. Community is what propels us in the next direction. And community also helps us to learn. It helps us to see that that which may be in our own thinking outside the norm, Maybe it has place in community. And maybe we together can find a way to acknowledge something that we possibly couldn't acknowledge in ourselves. There's a great deal of peace and grace in this collective that we have chosen to join together. This is community. This is what it looks like. And this is what God has chosen to move the kingdom forward in the world. When we seek peace, we come to those who know it. No Christ, no peace. But where are you going to find those who know Christ? Right here. Around these tables. This is the power of community. It's when we come together as God's people, and we spend time as God's people, loving each other, building each other up, laughing together, crying together, being who God has called us to be together. That's when we can find peace. Community. That's what you are. And this is what God has chosen.